Many people in the developing world depend to some degree on animals for their daily livelihoods. The livestock sector is one of the fastest growing parts of agriculture as it tries to respond to an increasing demand for meat and milk products from people in the cities who have more and more disposable income. This presents great opportunities for economic growth and for the bettering of the overall food security situation of rural and peri-urban livestock keepers. Pierre, critics of livestock development programs often state that donors and governments need to be smarter with their design and commissioning of livestock research and development programs. What do you think is the one activity that those involved in the setup have to do more of or maybe less of in order to achieve development targets? The point I think that in terms of livestock uh, production uh, is to give good certainty to the producers because everything is dealing at the end by uh, the value chain and the chain of competencies which is in parallel with this value chain uh, for ultimately to produce enough uh, animal protein, so in this case meat or dairy product for, for the people. And that, this is a pool mechanism that should be, uh, uh, it should be eased in his, in, in, in his implementation in order to guarantee the sustainability of it. To make it very simple, I mean, the farmers, whatever the type of production, meat or dairy, they will, be, they will have more interest to produce. When I say interest, they will have more certainty to invest in their production once they have a good access to the market. And when we look, for example, at the, the difference between the meat, beef production and the dairy production, the, 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 the beef production is an extent, mostly, for example, in Africa, is an extensive and traditional farming. People have decades and, uh, of experience. They know what they have to do, and they capitalize on their, the size of their, the, the herd uh, of, of the cows that they produce, so the, the, I will say the financial rotation for them in order to produce their own incomes, okay, is not that high. They have a huge capital, but the, the incomes is not that high. And with dairy, it's a little bit different because dairy, you have, a, a, I will say, a daily need from the, uh, from the rural, in the rural, and in the uh, urban population to have access to dairy products. And then that creates for these type of uh, farmers uh, uh, easier perception of what they have to do in terms of production. And this is a pure pool mechanism, mechanism starting from uh, the, the downstream part of the value chain. Donor investments in the dairy sector have seen both success and failure. What is the principal reason for this? Well, I think that once you have managed this pool, I would say, I'm sorry to be a little bit too marketing, but for any farmer, they are producers. When, you have, when they have seen and they are in an environment that helps them to have access to a market, even a small one, in a small village, they know that there is a good example of a small dairy processing and collection of milk in in, in small village and so on, they know that they, they, they can invest. And then the success coming from the fact that uh, alongside this value chain, let's say, creating incomes for the farmers, they will then need and they may afford support. Feeding, animal health, uh, and any other dealing with the management of the dairy of the dairy herd. And that helps also to move from the, I would say, curative animal health medicine to a more uh, herd management, to a more zootechnical management, to a more long-term management that creates the sustainability. When you ask people to come to, with the, the example of animal health, to cure cows which are sick and that can enter the local production, you're already reaching, you are at the age of the failure. 
when you move a little bit forward and the people are used to get contact with technicians, with a dealer, with a vet, whoever the type of people who can support them, that means they can anticipate, they can mitigate the problem in advance. So this is for me, I will say, the ingredients of the successful uh, example. Donors, funders, governments go out and encourage companies to invest in livestock and dairy development projects by employing profit or social responsibility criteria to justify involvement. What is the main pro and what is the main con of these new partnerships? Well, sorry for the silence. I know it's not that good for, for the interview. It's just to express that it's quite difficult to answer. I would say quite, quite simple. I think that any investment that you do in any type of organization, in any type of sector, you would like, you are the smallest farmers in the world, or you are a big international company, you expect some return. If you try to create a model of what will be the impact, sometimes we are, we are going into too many details, okay? And then at the end, that, 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 that uh, takes a lot of energy from uh, human resources, from the different actors, while this energy and resources could be put in action. This is, I think, the pro, it should be measured. The points, it should be measured in the right way and not too much in detail. Maybe I can rephrase the, the question also a little bit. And, you know, if you think about what's going on in, in business, the incentives, you know, there's different organizations, donors, funders, governments, uh, project leaders, uh, farmers, they all have very different incentives for their engagement in the project. Is that maybe a reason why it's difficult to answer that question? I strongly believe by my own experience and the experience of, of a private company that in order to prime the pump, in order to, to uh, help the, the emergence of a, a profitable, sustainable dairy sector, you need at the origin to uh, find some good public-private partnership. That means you need their competencies from the public sector, their competencies from the private sector, that means uh, the laboratories, the vets, the, the young vets, on the, the small vets, the small practitioner on the, on the field, from the reproduction management and so on. And this is a conjunction of all these, these competencies together that help to make these like the ingredients of the cake. There's much discussion currently about the time after the 2015 MDGs. What do you think should be the immediate priority activity of livestock donors and funders? I mean, in, in general, I mean, there is livestock and there is extensive beef uh, production in Africa and, and the dairy. But even when you talk with two different types of production in sub-Saharan Africa, the big lack that there is currently on the field of technical competencies. But there is a big lack of, from the vets to the extension workers. And there is not enough people to be able to support the farmers on the daily, on the weekly, on, uh, and we may, I will say on the, on the continuous process. In order to move from an emer almost an emergency situation to a more support of the management. The farmers have their own competencies, and the big demand is always to produce, I would say, human resources. People, brain juice for me is the main uh, ingredient in the success of uh, development, uh, uh, development project. So in a nutshell, you'd, you just completely ignored the 2015 MDG <laughs> subject. So you, would you say that's not relevant? I just want to say, and I introduced this way, uh, we have to remain very humble. I can only uh, contribute with our own expertise and uh, I would say our own experience, not expertise, from the field. What we record from the field with our angle of vision is that there is a big lack, there is a gap to fulfill between the different upstream stakeholders and the farmers. And on the other end, the, the for me, the, the, the way to initiate the mechanism is really 
to give to these farmers uh, a good certainty to access the market. Okay, thank you very much.